No. Hello, every oh wait, this is your intro. Hang on. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to Zero Interest. Uh, this time we're looking at Death Parade Episode Two, Death Reverse. Uh, Casey, take it away. Also known as Death Parade Episode One Point Five. So, this is about as good an endorsement as you could possibly get, I imagine, for the three episode rule. Yes. Yeah. Because, yeah, we saw the first episode and it was a bit hinky, to say the least, in terms of uh, plot structure. But, you know, first episode is like to be like that. I, I, mm -hmm. This episode is literally the same episode again, except the subtext is now text. It is. This, it's the only episode like this where it just goes behind the scenes of what happens. Um. I feel like this should have been lumped in with episode one as like one just really long episode to start. Uh, because this is just kind of giving a general explanation of how these, the system works. And then everything on from here is, is more uh, anthological. Yeah. The, <clears throat> the fact that they split this up into two different episodes meant they had a lot of time to fill to do it which really hurts this episode so much like as i say three episode rule because if you stop if you watch the first episode and then you think okay this has some promise but then watch the second episode you will immediately not want to watch any more of the show because this, I'm just, this saying, just drags the pacing rule. to a sudden unflinching halt or oh, I was trying to be fancy with my words. Shut up. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. it, mm -mm. Yeah. So, this is going to be a real short synopsis. Basically, uh, there is a woman. She wakes up in a place with a lot of light, and she doesn't remember anything, and is told, yeah, you work for us now, by small platinum blonde lady. By uh, Nona is her name. Sure. I assume that's nine. Yeah. So I guess. Um, I believe so. So, yeah. Uh, Noda, apparently, uh, leads this new woman around uh, to an elevator where, you know, they go down to Deckham's Bar. The, fifth, yeah, the 15th floor, Quinn Deckham. 15. Uh, uh, they like numbers in. Latin for some reason. So, uh, they go to this bar and they're like, okay, so this is what this place is. And it's exactly the same as what they said before, basically. So this is a judgment mm. place where they arbitrate where people should go, where they should go to heaven or hell. And they sit in the back room with all the, what turns out to be mannequins and not corpses uh, that we saw in the first episode. Yeah. And they explain, this is just to make people like, feel afraid because it will bring out their true colors and this then... is decking's hobby by the way is is these is these uh mannequins that's just his thing yeah it's kind of creepy they say in the episode, <laughs> it's kind of creepy yeah it's kind of creepy i think it's fine whatever you do you do yeah, um is. there's a lot more to it yeah then they go into the balcony and they watch proceedings from there of the previous episode and as i say Subtext becomes text. They just say everything that was implied in the previous episode, just say it right out loud like we're morons. This was entirely unnecessary. This... You remember last, last episode I did say, this is a three-episode rule kind of show? Hmm. This is part of the reason why. The first episode takes time establishing a lot of the aspects of this particular world. This episode adds some things to that part. Like, it does kind of specify, oh yeah, we compile memories. Um, those memories are sent to us before the people even get here. Yep, forgot that bit. That bit's important, actually, because it ruins the whole point of the ending. But, yeah. So, they establish the rules, 
they watched the whole thing from the previous episode behind closed doors, so to speak. Uh, mm -hmm. And then it basically does the after credit scene from the end of the first episode where it's like, can I ask a question? Where did they end up? And he's like, uh, yeah, the lady went to uh, the void and the dude went to uh, the reincarnation cycle. Mm -hmm. And then they, uh, the new lady who doesn't have a name as far as I'm aware so far. Uh, she does not. Yeah. Uh, she points out that, hey, that lady was probably lying about the whole uh, being in love with someone else and the baby not being his. Um, and she has to point out a lot of things that he should already know. Yeah. It's... And... It, it sells it as, like, he doesn't have insight into the human condition and how people's emotions and feelings will color their actions and what they'll they'll do just due to them and how it doesn't make sense, but that's just what people will do. That he doesn't get that, that's fine. But it doesn't really change the fact that he knew everything that he really needed to know about these people. He had... So, so one thing that's... They said they compiled the memories. He doesn't get all of the memories. He gets, like, a highlight reel of the memories. And then they... So, when he gets the memories of, of things from their perspective, he doesn't necessarily get, for example, everything they're thinking or everything they're going through. And because, because it's just there's too much. That sounds like a rationalization. I believe that's that's actually explained later on. Is that they they compile the memories by basically being like this memory is important for the judgment. This memory is important for the judgment, and kind of just send those memories through. Okay, um, that sounds like a rationalization after the fact. Then that sounds like something they added in later because they realized, oh shit, that completely undermined the message we were trying to go through with how, you know, these people are arbitrators and they're supposed to know all this shit, but we immediately undermine that by having them get it completely wrong in the first time we showed this for reasons that don't especially make sense unless there are very specific extra stuff added on to the explanation we gave. It, 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 it's fine that it's all well and good that they try and fix it later, but that doesn't fix it now when they needed to. Yeah. So. I, I see, I definitely see where you're coming from, where the idea of it starting with a flawed judgment somewhat undermines the purpose of the judgments. I do believe that's intentional. Um, and I, I think that it does come around later to being like, okay, yeah, no, this makes, this is better in hindsight kind of thing. But, as of right now, it's it's not very good. <laughs> yeah. This episode is basically there to establish New Girl is supposed to be the Marty of, of the whole outfit, the heart of the planet is, so to speak. Or the what's-her-name very Welsh lady that has a very nice voice from Torchwood, who is just there to be the human center of the show that gets people. Yeah. Whereas arbiters it doesn't. Arbiters don't have human emotions. That's something that gets established um, because they need to make calm, rational judgments. But because they lack human emotions, it makes them hard to relate to humans. And so it kind of creates a problem. Okay. And then after that, and there's a little bonding scene between New Girl and Deckham where she has drinks and such. Um, there is an after scene of Nona uh, taking the lift with Guy that runs the lift. Uh, mm. And she says, yeah, she did pretty good. And then she takes it back a second later and is like, actually... She's still got some things to work on because she didn't understand that that guy was actually a piece of shit and just would have 
been unhappy and would have yeah. ruined everything anyway. Which he does, he's me, not the type that trust people. To me, seems like a very deliberate insight into a human's condition and their emotional state. Nona is different. Of course she is. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just trying to expand this stuff because it's... I, I know a lot from this show and mm. I would, I'm just going to say keep watching it. See where it goes. Um... I don't want to spoil anything. Yeah. As I say, and as you've said before, this is a three-episode rule show. You, The concept is there. The concept is great. They they botched the execution at the beginning. That's It happens. It happens in some yeah. shows. That's why the three-episode rule exists. So, okay. I'm, I'm still in, but... I would really like the show to impress me at some point because <laughs> the concept is, is great. It is a good concept. And the concept was what made me watch past these first two episodes because I wanted to see what else they had going mm. because I was like, I want to see what sort of, what sort of games they have, what sort of stories they have, how this is executed. I think next one is bowling mm. and oh. that's going to be fun. Yeah. Uh, other thing, I. It turns out I'm not a fan of the opening. <laughs> this might this might seem like complaining for the sake of complaining, but I think it sets the wrong tone. I think it's contrarian for the sake of being contrarian. That it doesn't match the tone for the sake of not matching the tone, whereas everything else is completely dour and downbeat, and that's super hyper for no reason. I I, I can understand that if there's a point to be made, but there wasn't. I just love the opening because it sounds good and it's just so it's so opposite that I just find it hilarious. All right. like, yeah, it doesn't go with the tone at all. And from a more serious point of analyses, it's yeah, it doesn't fit. But from the point of I'm having fun watching this show, mm. I just like the serious conversation. Duh! <laughs> Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, it's it's it it brings brevity to a show that otherwise doesn't have much or levity. Yeah, I get those yeah. two mixed up all the time. Yeah, levity. brevity is something this show very much doesn't have based on this two, these no, two episodes. No, it, it brings it brings levity. <laughs> it, it brings a bit of yeah. It, it brings a bit of levity to the show. Yeah, my opinion is it, that it, I think it a, a show does not require levity. It, I know. It, it doesn't it, require it, can, it. It can be nice sometimes. But, like, I'm always reminded of, like, when this sort of thing comes up of, like, uh, Code Geish, where they would have serious, dramatic, uh, Count of Monte Cristo style revenge plot and such and such and such and such, and uh, revolution, and people are being absolute shitheads to Japanese people, and happy fun times! Let's all chase a cat around the school! Ah! Yeah, that that is some serious like tonal dissonance, and it's worse because it's actually in the show itself. Yeah, that that's a really egregious example, and that's why it keeps popping into my head when this sort of thing's up. This isn't anywhere near that bad, but it is the yeah. sort of thing I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My, my favorite part about the about the opening though is it tricked people into watching this show. <laughs> okay. Because I just like the idea of, yeah, no, this is totally fun. Everything's fun. Look at all these games. I have, to, I have to assume it was the Gyaru girl doing DDR about halfway through the opening. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, this is this, this going to be some some happy things and some miserable things, but lots of miserable things. Hmm. Um, I should hope so. Uh, one last thing I will say right. uh, regarding regarding this episode. I feel like, you know, you're definitely right. It does tread a lot of ground. 
but it also introduces a few characters as well as introduces a few concepts that will come up later. I feel like they could have done that though in a much more concise and proper manner. Hmm. And I think that's kind of where my problem with this beginning is, is because I like, I like a lot, like there's a lot of interesting concepts they're introducing all at once. They're just introducing them in a kind of clumsy manner. Yeah. Like if, like I say, if, as you say, this had been just a single, maybe 30 minute episode instead of 20 where, um, they would do the main plot and just do it straight but every now and again it would cut to the people in the back with the mm -hmm. girl that's learning the ropes and just get her inside some what's going on as it's going on so yeah if they wanted to do explain to the audience so subtext becomes text because they think we're more on i should stop saying that it's it's a really harsh judgment but that's what it feels like to me but if that's what they wanted to do then they should have done it all at once rather than showing us the same thing twice for no reason there's there's a there's a special like you want to be concise in your storytelling like that's something I've learned in my years of, as an English major and, and writing mm -hmm. is you want to be able to present things in a manner where everything feels like it matters so retraining the same ground takes away from that this is the only time they really do this where they have an entire freaking episode devoted to what happened behind the scenes it never happens again so mm. it gets better i swear don't do that again <laughs> okay so yeah that's episode two yeah that's what mm. What does interest me, I suppose, if anything, is the wrong judgment happens and everyone acknowledges, yeah, you did that one wrong. No one really rushes to fix it or do anything about it, though. He just yeah. gets a chewing out and that's pretty much it. Deal's done. That, set, that sets a tone. So. Yeah. Yeah. Right, Make sure you make the right decision. That's all I got. So, I think this would be a fun video game where you play the role of an arbiter and you have to try to make the right decision based on how people act mm. and gather okay. ev evidence and sort through memories. I can see that. Kind of a Danganronpa uh, meets Ace yeah. Attorney kind of thing. Yeah, like that. That kind of game. Mm. I think that would be a, an interesting concept. Yeah, that'll probably be all right. Hmm. Yeah, so you going to do the outro? Or... Uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, I was just thinking about that game. It would be fun. Have a great soundtrack, too. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, we'll see you guys next time with Death Parade Episode 3, which is called Rolling Ballad. Or Blade. I don't know. It has an E at the end of it. I've never seen that before. Yeah, Ballad doesn't have that. Yeah, I don't it's know probably what that's something, supposed to be. It's probably something French. Could be. Could just be the French spelling so, of Ballad. Who knows? Uh, I'm looking it up. Okay, I'm just going to keep yeah, waving no. until you get it. Okay, yeah, it's a, it's a early spelling and pronunciation of Ballad. Great. Bye, Bye everyone. Not. Ballad. By lad. By lad. <laughs>